Yum, yum! Ryan Ernst here with a quick look at the Substance Alchemist beta. In this video, we're going to go over how to set it up for a Moto Pipeline, how to make a tiling texture, and then how to bring those textures into Moto. The first thing we need to do is go into the material settings over on the left hand side. It's the sphere with the gear on it. Click on that and change your workflow type from metallic roughness to specular glossy and your normal format from DirectX to OpenGL. You can also pick the channels that you want to use here. I'm using diffuse, normal, specular, glossiness, height, and ambient occlusion. With that selected, we're ready to start. I'm going to switch over from the Explore tab to the Create tab in the top left corner, and then I'm going to drag in the image I want to use into my layer palettes here on the right hand side. Today we're going to be making a cloth knit material for my favorite shoe, the New Balance 993. I'm going to hit OK after I drag it into my layers palette, and it's going to populate with three layers, bitmap to material, images import, and base material. The first layer we're going to want to add is a crop layer. So in the layers palette over on the right hand side there's a circle that's cut in half. Click on that and navigate to crop and click on it. With that, with that added we can select it in our layers palette and it will automatically open up our 3D 2D layout. If any point you want to close that or switch over in the top right corner you've got 3D, 2D, and 3D 2D. Alright with that selected we can look in our 2D view up in the right hand corner of the 2D view you've got input and you've got output. If you're working with a crop you're going to want to switch over to input so that you can see what you're doing. Down at the bottom of that 2D layout you can see normal, diffuse, specular, glossiness, height. You can mix through any of your texture layers. I'm going to navigate over to diffuse so I can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better and then I'm going to pull this in so that it's nice and tight on a piece of clean cloth. The smaller that I go, the less I have to worry about large variations or differences uh, like warping of the texture as it goes around this toe of the shoe. Um, so I'm going to select that and then I can also, by clicking outside and rotating, I can rotate it kind of into place. That's looking pretty good, maybe a little bit more. So now with that cropped in, a good thing to do would be to switch around uh, through our different texture views and see what kind of work we have ahead of us. So I'm going to switch back over to output and then I'm going to look around the normal, the specular, glossiness, all that fun stuff and just see if I'm seeing any big variations that I need to take care of first. I'm not seeing anything uh, super out of the ordinary so I think I'll go ahead and add an adjustment layer on top of this. So I'm going to click on the add layers again and add an adjustment on top. So now inside our adjustment we can control the material scale, we can control uh, our albedo or diffuse color, uh, we've got height, reflection information, so this is where we're going to go in and make our material uh, kind of how we want it. So I'm taking a look over at the glossiness and that's going to be uh, controlled by our reflection in our adjustments here. So we can take down the contrast up it more, um, bring it down. Because this is a soft cloth I want to bring that uh, intensity pretty far down. It doesn't have to be completely black um, but you are probably going to want to adjust it from where it's at. Next I'm going to take a look at the height, so I'm also going to switch over to my height in my 2D viewport here. And here we've got some really cool settings we can adjust. The smooth detail elevation is really powerful. Uh, pretty much all of these things in here are just really powerful. So the smooth detail ele elevation you'll see um, tries to bring out, tries to separate your layers. So if it can read that there's two layers it's going to try and separate them more, making the top layer lighter and the bottom layer darker. Now when we're doing that you can see the more that we go up the more we're getting this big dark spot up top. So in order to fix that what I actually want to do is drop in an equalizer layer and just drag that down below my adjustment layer. So now if we go back to our adjustment, go into our height, 
if we up this, you can see that it's taking care of that larger black shadow splotch that was coming across it. And that allows us to get more separation out of our material. You can sharpen the detail if you want. You can lower it. I don't want, because this is going to ultimately, the height map is going to be our displacement map in Moto, we don't want to make it too sharp because that'll give us little like uh, spikes poking out of our, our material. But we can go a little bit sharper than what it was. So I'm upping that to 0.28. And then you can adjust your detail balance also. Until you've got it to where you like it. Definitely explore all of the options in these adjustment layers because they're really, really powerful. I'm going to switch over to the ambient occlusion now and take a look. And we can toggle on our recompute AO from height, and that'll help us with that uh, same separation that we were getting in our height. So if we want to give it a little more depth, we can do that now. We can up the spread a little bit, or reduce the spread a little bit. That's looking pretty good. All right, now the next thing that I want to do is throw a tiling on top of this. So back up to that same circle at the top of your layers palette and navigate down to tiling. Now with this tiling selected, you can see we're starting to get some more tiles. We can come into our basic parameters and up that so that we can see uh, where we've got some artifacts. And you can see in there, we've definitely got some. So I'm going to switch over in the 2D viewport from output to input, and then I'm going to adjust this uh, inside my 2D using this box transform, and I want to pull it so that we're kind of lining these edges up a little bit better than what it is. So we're going to align the sides and the top and bottom. You just want to make sure that you're getting your pieces nice and close and you're kind of keeping an even distance so that this stuff stays looking like it's actually knit. You can pull from side to side and just try and line this up as close as you can, keeping it even. That's looking pretty great. I'm going to switch over, or I'm going to open up my edge settings in this tiling layer. And this is where you can adjust your threshold, your blur, your smoothness, all on that edge that's running around the outside. So it's looking really, really sharp already, but if yours is having a little bit more trouble, try adjusting this threshold, this grid resolution, blur, smoothness. Uh, you really got to get in here and try out these settings and see what they're doing for you. I like to usually bring my threshold up quite a bit. I like to add a little bit of blur on there to help blend in the edges just a bit you can see there's still a little bit of a line through here but honestly once you're getting tiled that little line you're never going to see it um, I'm going to up my smooth just a little bit I don't see a lot of difference in the smooth so I'm not going to bother adjusting it too much and then I normally like bringing my grid resolution just all the way up so it has as much resolution as possible to work with and that's looking really sharp and really good now you can also, if you're having trouble with your edges, if you're having some uh, seams that you're tr uh, getting, try turning on your use threshold per channel. This is a really powerful setting. When you turn it on, you get a bunch more settings uh, as far as how you're gonna control the edge color, the edge normal, the edge height. So if we switch over here to like our normal map, you can see there's not a lot of big difference if we switch over to our output, there's not like a big jarring difference between our edge and our inside, but if there was, we could adjust this threshold normal. We're going to check our specular, our glossiness, and our height. So you can see inside our height, we've got a little bit of a seam going on there. So we can come into our threshold height and adjust that and see if we can't bring that into line up just a little bit better. doesn't seem to be giving me much of a difference here. I 
just sitting here playing with the grid resolution to see if I can uh, get it to start affecting it a little bit better but it looks best at the uh, highest grid resolution for my material so that's where I'm going to leave it Looking, I'm judging what I'm doing off of the 3D right now because I'm really not getting a lot of difference in the actual 2D map um, as far as the eye can see but in 3D you can see that uh, change just a little bit better so you can see if I'm dragging this around and it's recomputing it's uh, doing a pretty good job of showing that in 3D I think I'm going to end up with that just around maybe a 2.7, 2.5 maybe, um, right around there. And so you can see it's definitely still pretty choppy in the actual uh, texture map, but when it's on in 3D, it's looking pretty good. So I'm not that worried about it. You can come in here and you can adjust these to your heart's content, but I'm going to move on for the sake of this tutorial. That's looking really nice. I'm going to look through all of my texture maps again and see if there's anything else that I really want to adjust. I think the ambient occlusion is looking pretty good. The height's looking a little bit rough, but we're moving on. Like I said, glossiness, that looks pretty good. Specular, pretty good. Normal, pretty good. And diffuse, pretty good. All right, this is going to, I'm going to call this one done for now and I'm going to save it out. So if you want to save this to your collections down here, you're going to want to come up to the layers palette over to the little floppy disk and give this a name and where you want to save it. Hit save and it'll populate it into your collection down here. Now if you want to export this to Modo, what you're going to do is come over to the very far right hand corner and there's a little up arrow with a line underneath it. Click on that and then say export current view. Here you can change your format. You're probably going to already be set on a substance file or a substance archive. I'm going to switch over to a PNG and I'm going to up this resolution to 2048 by 2048. This is where you'll also set your destination path and you can pick which outputs you want to export. I'm good there so I'm going to hit export and then we're going to bring this into Modo and I'm going to show you how to set it up really quick. Okay so we're inside Modo and I've got my file explorer open to where I saved out my textures. I'm going to select those and I'm going to drag them into the material layer that I've already created for the base of that shoe. Okay, so with these added in here, we're going to select them, go over to the texture locators for each of them, and then we're going to adjust the wrap amounts and the UV rotation to line it up with our reference in the background. So I think Probably a good place to start is at 10, and then a UV rotation. I know I'm going to need to do it at 90 degrees because of how I took the photo, and then I never bothered to adjust it in the actual material. That's looking decent. It might need to go a little bit more than that, maybe 12. All right, any more adjusting would be silly because we should first come in here and set our effects for each of our textures. So on glossiness, we're going to make this specular amount. Height, we're going to make displacement. Normal, obviously normal. Specular, we're going to make specular color. Ambient occlusion and dis uh, diffuse are both at the bottom. And one thing that I just do for sanity's sake because I always move my diffuse colors up to the top of my stack. Um, sometimes it can help in the UI too or in the OpenGL so that you can see them. Alright, uh, next I'm going to set the ambient occlusion to probably either multiply or overlay depending on what looks best. We'll check it out on multiply. That looks pretty good. Um, we might turn this down. Your texture might be different than mine. You might need to turn your opacity down. Um, 
and then because the texture is coming out a little brighter pinkish red than I actually want, I want this kind of dark maroon in the background, I'm going to drop a process on top of all this. And then I'm going to adjust the hue and value to get the maroon color that I want. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. This has been a quick overview of Substance Alchemist Demoto. I hope you've learned something. Yum, yum!